Hey, this is Warren Redlick. Tesla just released a new video of wireless charging. I'm wearing the Tesla's the next Tesla t-shirt, t-shirts at elonbits.com. Check out the new Threat to Idiocracy t-shirt us also. This video, I'm gonna play this for you right now. I, I have this at half speed. And you can see the vehicle backs onto the charger. And then you're gonna see this screen coming up. And this is gonna be important. I'm gonna show you a zoom of this in a minute of it going up to 25 kilowatts. What's the percentage of the pack? How much time is it gonna to take to charge? That gives us a hint to learn more about CyberCab, the robo taxi vehicle. I'm not sure what it means, but we'll go over that in a second. Let's look at that close up. Right here, you see 25 kilowatts. There's 56 minutes remaining. And it's at charge rate, it's at 35% it's at charge. Hmm, 25 kilowatts, 35% charge, 56 minutes remaining. If, this is really simple math here, if its charge rate is 25 kilowatts and it's going to take an hour to charge from this point, that means it's going to add 25 kilowatt hours to the battery. Might be a little bit different than that, but it's pretty close. So if 25 kilowatt hours is added to the battery and that's 65% of the battery, we can do some math and figure out what the size of the battery is. But if you watch this video again, it's not clear to me whether 25 kilowatts is the top or whether it's on its way to somewhere else and the video cuts off. As I watch it, it seems to stop at 25 kilowatts, but I can't tell whether they just stopped the video or whether this is the maximum of 25 kilowatts. Um, I think there's a possibility that it goes up to 32 kilowatts or 36 kilowatts, and we'll go over that in a second. So here you can see it's at 25 kilowatts. 23, 24, 25. Now, the camera keeps moving and it doesn't change, it's going up fast. And then it stops at 25 kilowatts and it keeps moving and it doesn't go up. So does it stop at 25 kilowatts or did they stop it? It looks to me like it stopped at 25 kilowatts because you see the camera continuing to pan. It's possible that, that we're seeing something different or that's not the final charge rate. And you know, by the time, um, I think an important thing to realize is this is the state of the inductive charging system now. And it may be, since CyberCab is not going to be out until 2026, that they continue to optimize the engineering and they get higher. But I still think this tells us a lot. Let's do some pack math. So if 25 kilowatt hours is 65% of the total, what's the total? We get a 38 kilowatt hour pack. Now, it was 56 minutes remaining, not one hour remaining. You can quibble a little bit. So somewhere around 36 to 39 kilowatt hours is what that would suggest 40 kilowatt hours is a good guess if there's a buffer because you know what tesla shows there might be a little bit extra 42 kilowatt hours maybe and i asked it this is chat gpt i said well what if 32 is the actual charge rate or 36 is the actual charge rate what if they stopped the video at 25 kilowatts but it really went up to 32 or 36 kilowatts it came up with about 49 kilowatt hours in the pack if it's 32 kilowatts or 55 kilowatt hours in the pack if it's 36 kilowatts. Now, there's an important thing to note here is that when Tesla did Master Plan 3, which is not that long ago, they specifically said that the compact vehicle would have a 53 kilowatt hour pack. Now, the other numbers are 75, 100, 100, 300, 500, 800. Those are ballpark numbers. Those are rounded. But how would you round to 53? They, they could have just said 50 kilowatt hours. They specifically said 53 kilowatt hours. This seems like this was a hint that the compact vehicle was going to have a 53 kilowatt hour battery pack. I want to stress why this is important. I think CyberCab is going to get about six miles per kilowatt hour. The new long range rear wheel drive Model 3 is getting somewhere close to five miles per kilowatt hour, maybe 4.8 miles per kilowatt hour. CyberCab should be dramatically more efficient, should be dra dramatically lighter weight, more aerodynamic. The limiting factor just posted an image. If you look from the top of this video, let's go from the top of this video. See how tapered it is at the back? Um, limiting factor Jordan Gieske was talking about how 
that aerodynamic shape suggests that we're going to have a really amazing coefficient of drag. So we're probably going to get below 0 0.20. We may get to 0 0.19 or 0.18 coefficient of drag. This vehicle is going to have a lower frontal surface area than Model 3. The width and the height are going to be smaller. So the, the rectangle that you're pushing through the air is smaller. So that's going to help. The weight is going to be lower. That's going to help. If you have a smaller pack and it's very clearly a smaller battery pack, that's going to help. And I think they have a shot of getting to six miles per kilowatt hour. So if you get to six miles per kilowatt hour and you have a 53 kilowatt hour battery pack, you have over 300 miles of range. If you're down to 40 kilowatt hours from the, the math that we just did, if you're at ballpark 40 kilowatt hours, then you're at around 240 miles of range. Um, and if you are at, you know, 50 kilowatt hours, but, you know, the other two numbers I came up with are close to 50 kilowatt hours, and that fits with master plan three. Open question here. What's the actual size of the battery pack? I've heard sources say it's less than 40 kilowatt hours. There is no precise battery size or range figure yet. We're returning 5.5 miles per kilowatt hour. A range of around 200 miles is the target. This number, would, what we just saw, would suggest it's in the ballpark of 40 kilowatt hours. But it's really still not clear. Did it stop at 30 at 25 or was it on its way up to 32 or 36? I, I, I think it stopped. And that would tell you it's around a 40 kilowatt hour pack, 240 miles of range. Hey, I just want to add in here. I didn't notice this. Somebody else noticed it on X and I, and I see it now. It says charge and complete and the battery's not full. I don't know if the battery's at 80%. I would say this is more 90%. But if it's charging to 90%, let's say, then all of a sudden you're not talking about a 40 kilowatt hour pack anymore. I think this means we're probably, again, closer to a 50 kilowatt hour pack. A lot of people are unhappy with 240 miles of range. It's because they don't understand the point. The charge rate is only 25 kilowatts. Well, if I'm on a road trip, now it's going to take, for, it's going to, I'm going to have to stop more and it's going to take forever to charge. Well, that's not what the robo taxi is for. This is not your personal vehicle that you're taking on a road trip. You're missing it. This is a robo taxi. When you get in an Uber, you don't care how long it takes the Uber driver to fill the tank. They get you from point A to point B. They fill the tank later. Not your problem. That's somebody else's problem. If you've, if you've seen, if you've read the Hitchhiker's Guide, you understand somebody else's problem. This is not a vehicle for you to own for your personal use. It's not the intent. Not to say you can't do it, but that's not the intent of this vehicle. The purpose of this vehicle is for robo taxi use. And the typical robo taxi ride is going to be 5, 10, 20 miles. It's going to have enough range for that. And my expectation is that if the vehicle has, let's say, an average of 20 miles an hour over the course of a day, and it drives 12 hours over the course of a day, and 20 miles an hour includes times when it stopped waiting for being called for a ride. It includes stopping at traffic lights. A lot of the driving is going to be in cities. The, the actual range the the miles per kilowatt hour will be higher in cities my experience driving a model 3 and a model x is the actual uh efficiency is higher in cities than it is on highways because you get regenerative braking because you know you don't have the, the the drag is one of the biggest things the wind resistance is one of the biggest things so i expect whatever its rating is it will probably do better in cities so if it's doing a lot of city driving and it's doing a lot of time stopped at lights it's probably averaging less than 20 miles an hour over a 12 hour day that's 240 miles of range. And then it goes to at night to somewhere to charge, somewhere really simple to charge that has this thing laying on the ground. And it charges and it takes an hour. You don't care that it takes an hour. I don't care that it takes an hour. If it's driving 12 hours a day, there's 12 hours in the rest of the day for all the, the robo taxis to charge. And this is another big thing about this. This looks like it's a lot less expensive than a supercharger. You have a lot less complicated electronics. You didn't, don't need to handle the high voltages. You don't need to handle the same level of amps. This is going to be a much less expensive thing to build. Look at the size of that thing. And then on the car side of things, you don't have a charge port anymore. This is another thing that freaks people out. Well, I want to be able to supercharge my robo taxi. It's not going to have a charge port. And if it has a 40 kilowatt hour pack, you're not going to be able to charge faster than 120 kilowatts anyway, because the maximum charge rate tends to be about 3C. Whatever your battery pack is, if you have an 80 kilowatt hour pack, you can't charge more than about 240 kilowatts. It's just the way it is. You, you may be at a little more than three, but it's about three, and that's the peak charge rate, and it declines over time. So if you're able to get 25 kilowatts, 
and you charge, or let's say 36 kilowatts or whatever, and it takes an hour to charge. If you have a whole bunch of these and you can optimize your network optimizes, when is this vehicle charged? When is that vehicle going to charge? Then vehicles start coming in and over the course of the night, they charge and then they go back out on the road when they're full. And this solves a lot of problems. On the vehicle side, I was getting on the vehicle side, you eliminate the charge port. You eliminate all the cabling to the charge port. People are like, oh, well, this is going to be hard. How are they going to do inductive charging? This does inductive charging. You lay this in, in your Model 3 or your Model Y or your Tesla, and you put it on the console underneath the center of the, of the dashboard, and it charges inductively. If they can squeeze inductive charging into this, they can manage to get inductive charging into the car, and it won't cost that much. So the, the manufacturing cost of the vehicle is less because you have inductive charging the and, and you know you don't have this like really heavy duty cable you don't have the very heavy duty cable on the supercharger there's not much risk of vandalism they can probably manufacture these things in crazy high volume and deploy them pretty much anywhere i mean look at this where you can anywhere there's a parking spot you can put it this is going to be so much easier to do they're going to do this in massive volume now this isn't going to hit right we don't need these yet i don't expect to see this hitting until maybe 2026 but when it hits it hits big and you're going to see a lot of them roll out now we know that we expect in 2025 model y's and model threes and maybe s's and x's we'll be doing a robo taxi network in texas and california that's what elon projected in 2026 the cyber cab starts getting introduced probably starts in california and texas and we're probably going to see a lot of inductive charging deployed in those areas for the cyber cabs so that's what's coming and this that's what's a big deal here a little bit more, just so you have some background. Tesla acquired a company called Wytherian from Germany that was doing inductive charging, wireless charging. Um, you can see they talked about it in one of the presentations. It may have been Investor Day presentation. I don't remember for sure. And they talked about the future having these inductive charging pads. So you can see you can deploy these in your garage. 25 kilowatts. You know, that's not going to be hard to do in your house. Uh, it's going to be... That's better than what you get in your home charger. Your home charger probably maxes at around 19 kilowatts and a lot of them max a lot lower than that. So if you can get the right electrical setting for this, you know, maybe it's just a cable right to the fuse box. You don't have to run it through the walls or anything. Now you're talking about 25 kilowatts instead of a lot of home charging solutions or 12 kilowatts. So you can charge faster at home. At the time they acquired Wytherian, which was a few years, two or three years ago, Wytherian had up to 12, 11 kilowatts of wireless power from its so-called Halo system. And you can see here, this is a, uh, an article they had a while back in the robot report, and they had sold more than 8,000 3 kilowatt and 12 kilowatt systems. And they specifically said the EtaLink 12,000 enables in process charging of the lithium ion batteries of driverless transport systems. That when they, they sold Wyferian, um, they, they, uh, but they kept the engineers. So what Tesla does is they engineer solutions to problems. So they take this Wytherian system that's doing 12 kilowatts and they say, okay, let's see if we can get more out of this thing. Let's get 25 kilowatts out of this thing. And let's figure out how we can manufacture this in high volume and cheaper. If we can manufacture this in high volume and cheap, and then let's redesign the car so that the car can accept inductive charging and make that more efficient. And then let's save, you know, the best part is no part. Let's get rid of the port. If we get rid of the charge port. We've just solved another problem. So this is very fascinating what they're doing here. And again, this is not your personal transportation vehicle. So the prospects going forward are you have a lower manufacturing cost for CyberCab. You have a much lower, dramatically lower manufacturing cost for charging with these inductive charging units as opposed to superchargers. If you look at superchargers, you look at where they're deployed. Um, you have, first of all, they're large units themselves, much, much larger. They're five, 10 times the size of this pad. Then you have some very heavy duty electronics on the site. You have to do all these things to prepare the site. It's, it's, Tesla does it more efficiently than anybody else. I think it's somewhere around $40,000 a charger, their cost of installing when, they, when all is said and done. But these things look like they're less than a thousand bucks. You know, I, maybe it's 2000, but my guess is it's gonna be less than a thousand dollars for these things because they're gonna sell them to you for your home. And the, ele the electrician cost, it may just be, hey, plug it into your fuse box, you know, plug it into your fuse box and just lay the cable on the floor right to where the car is. This may be that straightforward. So 
very, very promising, very exciting. And this is, you know, what's the future look like for RoboTaxi? I think people have this idea that the RoboTaxis are going to have to go to a supercharger station. Someone's going to have to plug them in. Maybe you're going to have to have Optimus there to plug it in. And now it looks like Tesla's going to be able to lay these charging mats out wherever they feel like it. Low cost addresses, parking garages, whatever. Parking garages are going to become irrelevant in the future when the RoboTaxis take over. So you find places where there's empty parking lots at night and you just lay out a bunch of charging pads. And now you just drive your robo taxis and keep them somewhere close to where the robo taxis are doing their work. So you're not adding a lot of excessive mileage and you have them drive at their most efficient speed to get there. This is, this is a game changer. This is just one more thing that makes the robo taxi network efficient, makes the robo taxi vehicle more efficient makes the future lower cost. So you're able to deliver lower cost transportation to larger numbers of people. And we're gonna see this transition from humans owning vehicles to people taking rides. And you, no one's gonna stop you from buying a car, at least not in the near future. You're still gonna be able to buy your own car. But over time, it's gonna start getting expensive to buy a Tesla because the value of a Tesla and robo taxi use is gonna be much higher than your personal use. So. If a Tesla ends up costing $200,000 because that's its actual value as a robo taxi, are you going to pay $200,000 for your Tesla? Or are you just going to take a ride? That's the future I see coming. Other people see different futures coming. What future do you see coming? Let me know in the comments below or reply to this post on X. Please check out the t shirts at elonbits.com. Again, uh, Elon is a threat to idiocracy. Check out that t shirt, elonbits.com. Thank you so much for watching.